Hello guys, welcome to Programming with Rana Vakas. In the last video of the series, I taught you about getters and setters, which are also called accessor and mutator. In this tutorial, I will tell you about constructor and destructor. So whenever we make object of any class, that object calls function of its respective class, which basically initializes its data members. So let's take an example. Here I have declared an object of name P. And let's suppose without initializing the values to setters, write here P dot display. Let's run this code. So guys, you can see here the garbage values of P data members. So this is the value of P ID and this is the value of a P price. So these these are garbage values. Let's write constructor and initialize these member variables from zero. So when you declare this P object here, so here P called constructor of product class. So let's write constructor and initialize this member variables from zero. Guys, keep in your mind that constructor name is same as class name. So the class name, as you can see here, class name is product. Uh, so constructor name should be product. And also keep in your mind that constructor has no any return type. So it will be called automatically whenever and wherever the object will be declared. So that's why this constructor is called default constructor. So I can write here in the command section default constructor so here i can initialize the variables of this class from zero you don't need to initialize this name variable from uh, null or from empty string because the string is already class and this class this name is basically calling default constructor of this class string so that's why this is already empty. You don't need to write here name is equal to empty. So let's run this code again and check what will be the output. Now the output is not garbage value. Output is zero zero because you initialized the class variables from zero in default constructor. So guys, similarly as constructor, there is a destructor in class which will also be called whenever the object destroyed or object scope is going to be end. So let's take an example of this product P. The product P is declaring here at line number 53 and the scope of this product P is these brackets of main function. So before main ending of main function, this P will be destroyed, its scope will be end and its respective destructor will be called. So to write destructor, destructor name is uh, similar to the name of constructor and the name of class. And uh, as you can see here, the constructor was product. The destructor will be also named as product. Product. And uh, let's write here destructor of, uh, let's suppose it right here product name. And, uh, so now this this is looking like constructor default constructor. So differentiate between destructor and constructor, uh, you can write here tilde sign. This sign. So let's run this code again, and you will see that destructor of null because the name is null. Uh, so let's give it name. P dot set id one. P dot set name mat one. And let's suppose P dot set price set price 25.5. So let's run this code. Uh, you can see here one med one 25 25.5. It should be 25.5 destructor of med one. So guys, you can see here the destructor called when this object P scope has been successfully ended. So let's check why this price was 25. So here is price. 
so you can see that uh, you dot here int m so set price should be float m so let's run this code again you can see here one mad one 25.5 destructor of mad one so now let's make two objects uh, of different names so this is p so let's make here product p1 so this is another object p1 so here this p is calling default constructor and here this p1 is calling default constructor so p1 it should be small p1 p1 dot uh, set id to p1 dot set price 30 point 5 and p1 dot set name and it is madison 2 so let's print it p1 dot display there you can see here one mat one and 25.5 these are these all are values of p object and this two mat two and 30.5 these all are values of madison 2 but it means p2 so as you can see here the destructor of p p object that's madison 1 is called later than the object of p1 and you can see here the p1 is after this p object so guys keep in your mind whenever you declare objects here then these objects will go into the stack and uh, stacks property is last in first out so the object which last in was p1 so that's why the destructor of p1 will be called first uh, then this product p so let's suppose here is product p3 so let's quickly give it values copy this code is this code so replace this one with p And right here 3 35.5 Madison 3 so let's run this code so you can see here destructor of Madison 3 destructor Madison 2 and destructor uh, Madison 1 so similarly you can write here message in default constructor see out constructor of name so you will see Uh, why it is not displaying any value so because the value of name is null in this product constructor default constructor that's why you are seeing here constructor of null value so you can see here the name is null uh, because of this default constructor in next video i will teach you about overloaded constructor in which uh, we will display the value of this name in constructor so this message will be displayed as constructor of medicine 1 constructor of medicine 2 and the constructor of medicine 3 so hope you understood this tutorial don't forget to subscribe and like my video